Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening from here in Delhi and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine and we on our side always pray for your well-beingness and always pray to the Almighty to shower supreme success upon each one of you. So on such prefacing note, now we begin the session. Of course, today we are going to start and take up departmental accounts. This happens to be a pretty strong, formidable topic as each one of you are quite well aware of it. And more often than not, actually in the examinations, questions strike from this particular chapter and strike with great frequency. So, as far as this particular chapter is concerned, intensity is quite high. So, that should work as a sort of motivating factor for you. That's why you need to pay extra attention. There is another reason for you to pay extra attention towards this particular subject because later on when you are going to move into your practical area now over there actually you are going to find that you have to day in day out confront transactions relating to departmental accounts, correct? So on such count now we begin this particular session departmental account. What exactly the departmental accounts are? It is very simple. As we know nowadays actually big corporations and there are lots of big corporations especially in India, especially in the light of the fact that India has grown and grown by leaps and bounds, so day in, day out, lots of big multinational companies are what we call flinging in and big multi-corporation business houses are cropping up. So that's the reason there are lots of big uh, corporations now and we know that if you happen to be a big enterprise, quite obviously, <clears throat> you will have lots of what we call functional department. For example, there is a functional department in the form of marketing department, sales department, marketing or sales department, one and same thing, finance department, production department, accounts department and so on. So generally the big business houses or big enterprises divide and segmentalize and compartmentalize their what we call operations into some sections, into some operations, into some department as, as you may say so. Correct? It's quite obviously if we have divided our organization into several sections or several department, I would like to know the performance of each department. And in fact, that is the sole reason why departmental accounts are needed. So under departmental accounts, actually we are more concerned with the fact that which particular department is working to our expectations or not and if a particular department is not working up to our expectations then we may take what we call say remedy elections or we might actually simply stop the operations of that particular business because the operation of uh, that particular se section is hampering the uh, uh, entire operations uh, entire performance of all the operations of the business correct so departmental account plays a pivotal role in the sense that in assessing the performance of the different department through departmental accounts we may come to know which department is functioning up to our expectation and which one is not or which one need what we call some extra attention or which particular department would need some remedy elections and which department would need some strict actions and which department would need what we call rewards because there might be a department which might be working quite well, more than our expectation. We would like to reward that particular department. That is why departmental accounts is needed. And it is, a, it is quite simple in the sense, especially in the initial stages. All we need to do, suppose there are three departments in a particular organization for simplicity's sake. One, two, three. There are three departments. So I will have to prepare department one account department two account department three account one two three that mean i will have to prepare a column a columnar a trading and profit and loss account a columnar trading and profit and loss account i may have to prepare correct you will prepare your trading and profit and loss account in your normal usual manner as you are quite acclimatized to and as you are accustomed to for example you write opening stock you write purchases, you write all the direct expenses in trading account and sales account and closing stock to know the gross, gross profit. That is exactly what you are going to do here, over here itself. And below, obviously you are going to write all the indirect expenses. Then why this particular chapter is problematic? It is not problematic as far as when we would be asked to prepare simply the departmental trading and profit and loss account. But there are lots of things in this particular chapter as as and when we will move off we will discuss those points but especially in the light of what we call this particular fact what i want to tell you is that we are supposed to prepare departmental trading and profit or loss account but but 
little bit of problem we may face with respect to unallocated expenses. There are two types of expenses, one allocated expenses and one unallocated expenses. For example, if in the question you are given purchases of different departments, correct, or sales of different department, and most of the times you would be given in this manner itself, then I would say that purchases or sales have been given to us in an allocated manner. That means it is already divided. It is already given segment wise, section wise or departmental wise. I need not require to do anything. Only thing is that I have to put the figure of departmental one over here, departmental two over here, departmental three over here and so on. Similarly, generally all the direct expenses will be given to us. Generally, I'm not telling always, but most of the time we would see that direct expenses would be given to us in departmental wide manner. It means in, in an allocated manner. However, suppose if I give you that rental expenses are 1 lakh. So in this case, you are not given this particular expense in a departmental wide manner or in a section wise manner or what we call in a compartment wise manner. That means this time you are this rental expense is an unallocated item. So any unallocated item needs a little bit of attention in the sense that you will have to segregate this on the basis of some rules and you need to be aware of all those rules. It is quite similar to a chapter which you do most of the time in your costing under overheads. You used to divide what we call various expenses, do you remember? On some basis like rental expenses, etc., salary expenses, etc. So similarly, if there is an expense which is not given in a departmental wide manner, in that case such expenditure would be termed as an, an unallocated item. And I would, in that particular case, need to divide it on the basis of some rules. So I need to be well aware of all those rules. That is the only thing which I need to do. So this is just an overview what exactly the branch account is, sorry, departmental account is all about. However, as I also told you in this particular chapter, it is quite lengthy chapter, lots of things. Correct? Lots of things in this particular chapter in the sense, for example, I have divided it into, I think, five or six sections. In the first section, we have kept questions on you know, what we call preparation of departmental trading and profit and loss account, for example, and sorry, and then when we would move over to the next section, next section, over there, we will see that there are questions related to interdepartmental transfers. Sometime a, bra sometime a particular department may sell goods to the other department or purchase goods from the other department that is known as interdepartmental transfer. Similarly, then we move over to the next section. This is third type of problem, you may say so. Over there, again, we would face interdepartmental transfers, but we will also see that out of interdepartmental transfers, some goods are remaining. If out of interdepartmental transfer, some goods are still in the stock, then great problem arises. In fact, that is the most toughest part of this particular chapter. So in that particular case, we may have to compute unrealized profit. Correct? So section 3 is quite vital. Then we'll move over to section 4. Over there, we will see actually how to compute departmental managers. And sometime we will have to rectify the profits to know the correct profit. So... That is section 4, wherein we may need to rectify the profits and simultaneously compute the departmental manager's commission. And there is fifth section also with respect to uniform gross profit. Correct? So there are lots of sections and I have added another section, MCQs, which you will do it by yourself because that is always given in a solved manner. So these are your notes. I hope you have also pulled out your notes. I need not require to tell you. Comprehensively, we have covered each and every question of the module, RTP, past year paper, correct? So, you need not require to hunt for any other material. I need not require to tell you because now you have done so many chapter and you must have noticed that we are covering each and every question of the even of the latest examination. So, departmental accounts. As usual, first of all, we will write some write a way bit about this particular chapter, a little bit of theory, and then we'll move over to the further discussion as normally we do. So if you are ready, because I am not one of those who will simply read the things, so it is always better to write. And when you write off in your own, own handwriting, you get a good picture regarding that, correct? So I would need a bit of space. So what I am going to do, I am going to just reduce the view for a while, for a while. So it will create more space for me to write, correct?
So please write along with me. Departmental account is the name of the chapter. Departmental account. Departmental account. I would like you to write, correct? Departmental account. Only brief overview I am writing. Departmental accounts. As far as departmental accounts is concerned, if somebody would ask you, what is departmental accounting, then you should be in a position to deliver the answer, correct? What departmental accounts are? We will see that departmental accounts are accounts relating to separate departments or sections of the organization, as I said a while ago, and adopted to know that, uh, operating to know the performance of each department or sections. So, departmental account you write here, departmental accounts, departmental, departmental accounts, departmental accounts are, departmental accounts are accounts, are accounts relating to are accounts relating to as I told you separate departments relating to separate departments separate departments or sections you may write or sections sections of an organization of an organization and adopted that means why an enterprise adopts departmental accounts and adopted to assist to assess the operating, assess the operating results, operating results of departments. Obviously, we are going to adopt departmental account to assess the performances of the different departments. Quite obvious, correct? As I told you, under departmental accounts, in order to know the operational results, a departmental trading and profit and loss account is prepared. So we write here, under departmental, under departmental accounts, under departmental accounts, under departmental accounts, comma, in order to in order to assess in order to assess the operational results operational results comma a departmental trading and profit and loss account, a departmental trading and profit and loss account trading and profit and loss account is prepared is prepared i also told you when we prepare departmental trading and profit and loss account correct we need to be careful with respect to unallocated expenses while preparing while preparing 
while preparing departmental trading and profit and loss account departmental trading and profit and loss account comma no problem no problem arises no problem arises with respect to with respect to allocated items allocated items i hope you got the meaning that means such item which are already given to us in a departmental wide manner allocated items that means such items which are already given to us correct in a divided manner so such expenses are allocated and we are not obviously going to get any sort of what we call problem out of that problem will be faced by us with respect to what we call unallocated items correct on the other hand on the other hand on the other hand comma unallocated unallocated items shall have to be shall have to be allocated now we shall have to allocate them to different departments shall have to be allocated on the basis of on the basis of some specific rules on the basis of some specified rules so we need to be aware of all those rules correct point number 1 expenses such as expenses such as expenses such as selling expenses selling expenses traveling expenses bad debts bad debts carriage on sales carriage on sales remember one thing carriage on sales is, is an indirect expense whereas carriage on purchase is always considered as direct expense isn't it or not after sales service expenses after sales service expenses then uh packing expense you right packing expense go down rent go down rent storage storage expenses discount allowed discount allowed discount allowed correct then you write 
Okay, I think it is more than enough, etc. Are allocated. Are allocated on the basis of on the basis of sales turnover because all these expenses are related to sales if you if you have noticed so quite obviously these will be divided on the basis of sales turnover correct then rule number two is that rule number two rule number two is that there are some expenses like carries on purchase similarly discount received and these expenses will be divided on the basis of purchases. Expenses such as carriage on purchases, carriage on purchases. Discount received shall be apportioned, shall be apportioned on the basis of purchases on the basis of purchases so these items will have to be segregated on the basis of purchases correct it means we will take the ratio of purchases of each department and on the basis of that ratio i will allocate such type of expenses similarly your next rule is with respect to your rent and rates repairs etc expenses like rent and rates repairs insurance of building should be allocated should be allocated on the basis of on the basis of floor area floor area correct so on the basis of floor area such expenses will have to be divided i told you it is quite similar to this allocation rule is quite similar to uh, the items which you used to actually divide in your overhead chapter in your costing, if you remember. Correct? Point number four. Point number four. Suppose in the question you have been given lighting. Now, as far as lighting is concerned, you can divide it as per light points. However, if in the question light points are not given, then you take floor area as the basis to divide it. Correct? Then we have depreciation. As far as depreciation is concerned,
So depreciation expenses and also write along with it repairs of an asset. Repairs of an asset. Repairs of an asset Insurance of plant and machinery Insurance of plant and machinery So if you come across such expenses Obviously these expenses will be given to you in an unallocated manner So you will have to allocate them So you will allocate them on the basis of value of asset value of asset value of asset correct similarly if we are given group insurance group insurance Group insurance is divided or segregated on the basis of direct wages. On the basis of direct wages, correct? On the basis of direct wages. Similarly, if we are given power expenses, power. In order to divide the power expenses, generally horsepower will be given in the question. Horsepower. On the basis of that, we will divide or we may take horsepower into hours worked. Either of these two bases could be used for segregating the power expenses. Correct? Similarly, if suppose you are given salary of works manager, salary of works manager, Salary of works manager. Now, salary of works manager will be divided on the basis of time spent. Time spent on each department. Each department. Similarly, If it is given in the question like canteen expenses or labor welfare, or we are given number of, or sorry, we are given medical benefit. medical benefit expenses in that case it is better to divide these expenses on the basis of number of employees number of employees correct and finally one more you better write because we have written so many so why not this one also let us say, although it is given very rarely, but it still could be given. Provident fund. Or ESI contribution. Employee security insurance contribution. If such expenses are given, it is better to divide it on the basis of wages or salary. If wages are given, fine. 
otherwise we can pick up salaries. So these are the things we need to take care of. Is it clear to you or not? Otherwise, it is not difficult. Now see here, I have already told you the types of problems which we are going to face. I explained it earlier. These are the type of problems which we may confront in this particular, uh, what we call chapter. So problem concerning with allocation of expenses. In fact, this is our section number one. And then so on, total all in all, we have kept five or six sections besides MCQ. So now we go for the first section. Now pay attention. First, I will increase the view so as to explain it. And then when I will have to write, I will reduce the view. Correct? Now we pick up the first question to begin the story of this particular chapter. So in this particular question section one simple allocation of expenses i hope you have already pulled up pulled out your notes so in this particular question and these are simple questions to be very honest with you you are given the following particulars of a business now having two departments prepare departmental and trading and profit and loss account for the year ended 31st of march 2023 so opening stock this is given Correct, departmental wise, there are two departments, department A and department B. So, respective department stock is available. So, this is an allocated expense. So, we will not face any problem with respect to opening stock, with respect to purchases, with respect to sales. We will have to simply put up what we call in the department. Similarly, sales returns are there. Of course, sales return will be subtracted from sales. Then we are having closing stock. Till up to this stage, no problem, then wages and wages are also given, salaries are also given in a segregated manner, all these items have been given, so these are allocated items. Now question states below, there are some common expenses, common expenses means we will have to allocate it. For example, in this particular case, you are given that rent is 15,000. Now if rent happens to be 15,000, I will have to divide it. And in order to divide rent, Below, some other, in, some further information is given. Question states that some further information is also given to you, which is as follows. Now, light points is given, value of assets is given, and floor area is given. So, I will have to divide the rent as I just told you a moment ago. For example, rental expenses are 15,000, correct? Rental expenses are 15,000. And we know that rental expenses will have to be divided between department A and B. And how to divide these expenses? Point is this. We know that on the basis of floor area. On the basis of floor area, I will have to divide this expense. Isn't it or not? Now, floor area I can see is 300 for department A and 200 square feet for department B. So, on the basis of floor area, I will divide this particular expense. On the basis of this means, I will take the ratio that is 3 is to 2. Floor area ratio is 3 is to 2. That means, as far as rental expenses are concerned, 15,000 into 3 by 5, I will allocate to department A. And likewise, 15,000 into 2 by 5, I will allocate to department B. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, we have been given electricity. Now, as far as electricity is concerned, we know that electricity will be divided on the basis of light points. For example, electricity is given to us and it is also given to us that light points in different department A and B are 18 and 19. Are 18 and 9, 18 and 9, sorry. So, I will divide, in fact, allocate 6000 into 18 by 27. 18 plus 9 is equal to 27. This much will be allocated to department B, the department A, and similarly to department B, 6000 into 9 by 27. 9 by 27. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, we have been given now depreciation. As far as depreciation expenses are concerned, it can be easily divided on the basis of value of the asset. Now, on the basis of value of asset, VOA, value of asset, and the ratio of value of asset is 15 is to 12. In fact, you can further reduce it. That is 3, 4 are 12, and 3, 5 are 15. So, in the ratio of 5 is to 4, you can divide depreciation expense. 
correct similarly selling expenses are given now selling expenses obviously you will have to divide as per sales but here one important point is that when you will take the sales you will have to take the net sales that is very important you will have to take the net sales is it clear to you or not so still just this is the first question so i will do it for you in a manner that you understand it better because this happens to be your first question not a tough one this is just to begin the story as I told you, I will have to reduce the view with it now. So to create more space for me to write. Section 1 now we are starting. Section 1. Correct? Section 1. Under section 1, we are picking up question number 1.1. 1.1 itself means section 1, question number 1. In order to prepare this, first of all, I write here Departmental Trading and Profit and Loss Account. Departmental Departmental Trading and Profit and Loss Account. Trading and Profit and Loss Account. Then I will stretch a line here. I think this much is enough. And there are two department in this case, that is department A and department B. I will write department A, I will write department B. Now I will look into the question. Now, initially, the items are given like this, for example, opening stock. So I will simply write 25,000 over here, then 20,000 in department B. Then I will write purchases. As far as purchases are concerned, 230,000 for department A is given. Similarly, 190,000 for department B is given. So far, there is no problem. Now, sales return is given to us. See here, when I will write here sales, I will write here sales less sales returns. For example, if you will look, total sales of department A is 633,000. I will subtract 3,000 sales return and I will write here net sales 630,000. So sales return is already incorporated now. And similarly, you can see total 492,000 is the sale of department B. And sales return is equal to 2,000. So that being 492 minus 2,000, that is 490,000 will be net sales. 490,000 will be equal to net sales. Is it clear to you or not? Then we have been given wages. Wages is equal to 80,000. And then 60,000. We haven't written here closing stock, also write closing stock. 30,000 closing stock and 18,000. So you have written the amount of stock also. We have been given salaries now. I will write salary, but before that we can now tally this account, that is trading account. So our gross profit will be equal to 3,25,000. You must also make a check. 2,38,000. This is our gross profit. Now I will write here gross profit brought down. When I will write gross profit brought down, it will be equal to 3,25,000 and 2,38,000. Correct? Now I will write here salaries. Now salaries given to us. 40,000 and 25,000. So I will write simply 40,000 and 25,000. No problem with respect to salaries. However, little bit of problem with respect to rent. I have already told you with respect to rent. Correct? We have already computed that total rental expenses are actually 15,000. Actually, no need to do this way, but just to make you understand, because this is the first question. So that is why. 
note number A or whatever it is. Now we know that rental expenses are 15,000. Rental expenses, we will use floor area as I just told you to divide this expense. Is it clear to you or not? Floor area. So on the basis of floor area, we will divide the rental expenses. Now rental expenses is equal to 15,000. Rental expenses is equal to 15,000. So these expenses will have to be divided on the basis of floor area. So department A, 15,000 into, now floor area of department A is equal to 300 and total floor area 300 plus 200 is 500. Or you can simply reduce it 3 by 5, you can simply say. So 9,000 will be allocated to department A and similarly, Department B 15,000 into floor area of Department B 200 divided by total floor area which is equal to 500. So 6,000 will be allocated to what we call rent to Department B. So 9,000 now I am going to write here and 6,000 I am going to write here. Similarly, next one is electricity. I have already told you electricity. As far as electricity expenses are concerned, we know that electricity light points will be used. Electricity on the basis of light points. On the basis of light points. Correct? We know that department a department B. As far as light points are concerned, we have seen that there are 18 light points in department A and there are 9 in department B. So, electricity expenses which are given to us as 6000. So, department A will be allocated 6000 into 18 by 27. That is equal to 4000. Similarly, 6,000 into 9 by 27, that is equal to 2,000 will be allocated to Department B. So, 4,000 and 2,000 I will write over here. Simple, not tough at all, very simple. Then in this question, we had been given depreciation. In fact, we have been given depreciation. So, as we know, as far as depreciation is concerned, correct, depreciation is concerned, depreciation. As far as depreciation is concerned, Department A, Department B, oh, oh, this is blue pen, that is the only problem. Machine value or value of asset in this question. So, value of asset on the basis of value of asset, we will divide it. Now, value of asset given to you is 1,50,000 and 1,20,000. So, my advice is to reduce it 15 is to 12. Correct? Or 5 is to 4. So, as far as depreciation expense, which in this case are 18,000. So, 18,000 into 5 by 9 will be allocated to Department A. And 18,000 into 4 by 9 will be allocated to Department B. 18,000 into 5 by 9 is equal to 10,000. So, I will write here 10,000 and 18,000 into 4 by 9 is equal to 8,000. I will write here 8,000. Is it clear to you? Now, next point is regarding sales expenses. Obviously, sales expenses which are given to you in this particular case 8,000 sales expenses. As 
as far as sales expenses are concerned, first what I am going to do is note down the sales of the respective department. But remember one thing, it is always better to write net sales. So sales expenses will be divided on the basis of net sales. And you have computed the net sales earlier. So as far as net sales is concerned, Department A is 6,30,000 and Department B is 4, lakh, uh, I think 90,000. So 6,30,000 and 4,90,000. Correct? You can reduce it further. And that is 63 is to 49. I think we can still reduce it further. 7, 7, 49. And 7, 9, 63. So total will be equal to 16. So we can easily find out what we call expenses with respect to this particular item. 8,000 into 9 by 16. I think it will be equal to 4,500. And 8,000 into 7 by 16 will be equal to 3,500. So this is how you need to do this particular question. Correct? Is it clear to you? So now, we will move over to this area, 4,500. So we have allocated all these expenses. You can write here A, you can write here B to tell the examiner how you have allocated. Correct? And 3,500. So now we can find out our net profit. And net profit is equal to 2,52,500 and 1,93,500. This is how you are going to do. So as far as allocation of expenses is concerned, that is not going to pose us any big problem. Correct? Any big problem. Now we pick up, we pick up another question, 1.2. The initial two, three questions, as I normally do, are basically just chapter openers. You can manage this question of your own, but still just I will discuss this question. 1.2. Have an attention. It is given that following data, in fact, I will increase the view now, so as to have a better understanding. So if technology is there, we need to use it now. Following data have been extracted from the records of Patanjali Products Limited, correct? You are required to prepare the departmental trading and profit and loss account for the year ended 2023. Now, in this question, as far as this particular expense is concerned, purchases, it is given in a departmental-wide manner, that means allocated manner. So, no problem from purchases, no problem from wages. Now, we have been given number of employees. Actually, these are the basis. That means you will use number of employees to divide a particular thing, correct? Similarly, value of asset. So, you are not going to write these things anywhere. Light points. Similarly, area in a square feet. However, closing stock, obviously, you are going to write and sales, obviously, you are going to write in your trading account. Then, just wait. Sometime, you know, this mouse actually creates problem. Staff welfare expenses is given to us. If you remember earlier, regarding staff welfare expenses, I told you staff welfare expenses will be divided on the basis of number of employees. So, on the basis of number of employees, you will divide number of employees. Now, I need not require to do this question. I will simply explain it. Number of employees is 30, 40 and 40. That means 3 is to 4 is to 4 is the ratio. 3 is to 4 is to 4 is the ratio. So, 
on the basis of this ratio you will divide 22000 worth of expense so that should not be a problematic task for you similarly now the next item which is given to us is electricity expenses now regarding electricity expenses i need not require to tell you that light points will be used as far as light points are concerned in the question it is given 20 is to 32 is to 8 20 is to 32 is to 8 so on the basis of this ratio you will divide light expenses is it clear to you now you have been given rent and rates now you let me know on what basis should i allocate this particular expense in this question it is given to us floor area is it given to us floor area let's have a look again we have been given light points area yeah square feet area is given so on the basis of area we will divide and area which is given to us is 900 is to 1200 is to 300 so you can shorten this ratio also it will be equal to 9 is to 12 is to 3 and in fact you can further reduce it 1 4 3 so in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 1 you can divide what we call rent and rates as far as depreciation is concerned on the basis of asset value on the basis of asset value i will do this way around asset value correct so asset value ratio is 5 lakh 4 lakh 3 lakh you can shorten it it will be equal to 5 is to 4 is to 3 so on the basis of this ratio you can divide the depreciation expense now selling expenses are there you know that selling expenses will be divided on the basis of net sales in this case there are no sales return so your ratio sales expense ratio sales ratio will be equal to 6 lakh 80 that is 68 8 lakh 70 that is 87 and 900 900 so on the basis of this ratio 68 87 90 not 900 sorry i have written 900 it is actually 90 so that is how you are going to do this particular question it is correct so first of all you will write purchases on the debit side as you have written here see i have prepared departmental trading and profit and loss account so i have written the amount of purchases so should not be a big problem for you you can easily manage this one isn't it or not after purchases you have been given wages three lakh four lakh six lakh simply you are going to put amount of wages then these items are basically basis so we are not going to put them anywhere however closing stock i will definitely write then sales obviously i am going to put over here now coming over to staff welfare expenses staff welfare expenses is 22000 so 22000 will be divided in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 4 as i have written also so in the examination you can simply write here 3 is to 4 is to 4 there is no need to need for you to actually put up a separate what we call treatment so 6000 8000 8000 will be your value then we have electricity expenses electricity expenses as i told you on the basis of light points 20 is to 32 is to 8 this is what i have written in the bracket as you can see correct that is 20 is to 32 is to 8 so you will divide and you will get these figures similarly rent rates and taxes similarly depreciation and similarly selling expenses 68 87 90 as i told you here so this is how you will have to divide the thing now you can balance it easily your gross profit and net profit it is not a very tough question so you can manage this question quite well isn't it or not as far as 1.2 is concerned that is of that is not a big trouble for us now as far as 1.3 is concerned this is also of elementary level to be very honest with you so you can again manage this question of your own and uh, just we will have a look over here opening stock is given you can simply put it towards the debit side purchases then you have sales sales now see actually when you write sales it is my advice adjust the sales returns so return inward means sales returns so instead of writing four lakh for nine lakh forty nine thousand five hundred you separate four thousand five hundred from here and then simply put net sales and similarly seven lakh thirty eight minus three thousand correct 
closing stock then 45 and 27 salaries will come in your what we call profit and loss account direct expenses in your trading account now we come over to the important aspect as far as commission is concerned correct just a moment ago actually i told you as far as commission is concerned let's see actually first of all what is given to us in the question these are some indirect expenses administrative expenses depreciation electricity expenses these are indirect expenses given to us and some basis is given to us for example there are 81 number of light points in all out of which 54 are engaged in department x rest in department y department y so 54 minus 81 whatever you are left up with those light points will be used in department y correct so as far as electricity is concerned if i subtract 54 from 81 i think the remaining rest means 27 so light points so electricity expenses you will divide between the t2 department in the ratio of 27 so in the ratio of 54 and uh, 27 that is 2 is to 1 question says there are 81 light points 54 light points 54 light points are meant for department a and rest rest mean 27 then only it will become 81 and you can shorten it down also it will be equal to 2 is to 1 so you can divide your electricity expenses in the ratio of 2 is to 1 then we have been given department x and y have assets worth rupees 4 lakh 50 and 3 lakh 60 it will be used for depreciation for example depreciation 27000 is there you will have to divide it in the ratio of 4 lakh 50000 and 3 lakh 60000 you can shorten it down easily that is equal to 45 or 36 you can further shorten it 9 4 are 36 9 fives are 45 so depreciation in the ratio of 5 is to 4 you can divide on the basis of assets and then we have been given commission and administrative expenses are to be divided between the departments in the ratio of 3 is to 2 now regarding division of commission 3 is to 2 is given regarding administrative expenses 3 is to 2 is already given to us now only thing remaining is selling expenses we know that selling expenses will be divided on the basis of sales ratio on the basis of sales ratio however when you will take the sales you must take the net sales is it clear to you you can manage this question of your own i think now still i will tell you opening stock is given to you you can simply put it over here similarly purchases and this is the point i was talking about you have written here net sales and it is always better to write here the net sales correct so that later on when you will require the sales ratio you get less problem now direct expenses will be put over here closing stock needless to add you will get the gross profit you will write the gross profit over here now salaries have been given in a segregated manner however commission you will have to divide in ratio of 3 to 2 as we talked about administrative expenses in the ratio of 3 to 2 selling expenses in the ratio of net sales your net sales ratio is 945 is to 735 so on that basis you will divide your selling expenses depreciation i told you on the basis of assets value that is equal to 5 is to 4 and electricity as i told you on the basis of light points 2 is to 1 so you can now easily get what we call your net profit is it clear to you or not so as far as this point is concerned again it is not a big problem now we move over to allocation of expenses this is quite a strong question and this question has already struck in the examination not only once but on many a times to be very honest with you so we pick up 1.4 and i will solve this question for you completely and comprehensively 1.4 is the next question it is quite an interesting question correct so that you understand this question quite well so that you understand this question quite well i will just allow me just allow me a second correct let us say fine 
just wait actually i want to do something for you but i'm not succeeding in it right Sir, what are you doing? I will let you know in a short while. You will thank me later on. Don't worry about that. Let us say this is the organization. There is an organization. In order to explain this question, first I am giving you a brief idea regarding this particular question so that you understand it better. We presume that there is an organization. Correct? We further presume that this organization has got two segments. One is showroom, showroom. And another one is workshop. That means this business or organization has got two main segments. One is showroom, another, another one is workshop. Is it clear to you? Further, we will see that showroom has two departments. In showroom, we will have two departments. Department A and Department B. Department A deals with TV, sale of TV, while Department B deals with DVDs. Now, nowadays, most of you might have not heard about DVDs. Correct? Digital video discs. Anyway, so TV, DVD. There are two department A and B in showroom. In workshop, there is a department by the name of department C. It is given in the question we will see later on. So that you understand the question quite well, I am giving you a brief idea regarding the question. And this department deals in repairs and maintenance. It provides repairs and maintenance services. Repairs and maintenance services. This is the scenario of this particular question. The trading and profit and loss account of TV and DVD company. Intentionally to confuse you, they have named the company as TV and DVD company. So that you may think that there are only two departments. But actually we have seen that there are basically three departments. Department A, Department B and Department C. Another important point in this question is, which requires a little bit of attention. The trading and profit and loss account of TV and DVD company limited for the half year ended 31st March 2021. For the half year ended, that means this is six monthly position is given to us. The position is given to you here below. And as per the position, it is given that purchases in department, purchases for department A which deals in TV. Do you remember? Yes, sir. 1,70,000. DVD are sold in department B. So purchases of department A and B is given. And these are purchases with respect to spare parts for servicing. Obviously department C as I told you deals in servicing. Uh, it provides repairs and servicing facilities. So it has purchased what we call some spare parts. So first three items are basically purchases of the respective departments so you are going to put them over here when you will prepare departmental trading and profit and loss account now the next item is salary however we can see that salary is not given departmental wise similarly we are not given rental expenses and selling expenses departmental wide so we will have to allocate them however in this particular question we are given sales of department a total sales Total sales of department B is also given to you. And receipts from servicing and repairs, that means these are what we call sales of department C. Closing stock of different department is also given to you. Only thing is that you have to divide these expenses. In this particular question, you have to divide these expenses. That is salary and wages, rent and selling expenses. We have to divide it. Further, it is given just waits further it is given prepared departmental account for each of the three department a b and c mentioned above 
after taking into consideration the following information after taking into consideration the following information and regarding which i have already told you but just to explain the point tv and dvd are sold in the showroom this is what i drew earlier servicing and repairs are carried out at the workshop through these lines i have been able to draw this diagram before you correct then it is given that salary and wages comprise as follows salary and wages comprise as follow, follows means out of total salary out of total salary and wages three fourth is related to showroom and one fourth is related to workshop further it is given it was decided to allocate the showroom salary and wages in the ratio of 1 is to 2 between department A and department B. What does this particular line actually mean? Let me actually explain it because moreover ultimately later on I will have to show you. So it is better I will do it for you right now so that you understand better. But let me go through also the entire question so that later on I can reduce the view also so first of all question states that whatever your salary and wages your total salary and wages is equal to 48,000 let me explain this if I compute three-fourth of 48,000 it will be equal to 36,000 so question says indirectly or indirectly out of 48,000 salaries 36,000 salary belongs to showroom and 12,000 one fourth, 12,000 belongs to actually workshop. And here it is written, it was decided to allocate showroom salaries. Now salaries of the showroom is 36,000. And we have just seen that in the showroom, actually there are two department A and B. So question states that it was decided to allocate the showroom salaries and wages in the ratio of 1 is to 2. 1 is to 2, that means one third of 36,000 will be allocated to department A, that will be equal to 12,000. Showroom salaries are 36, there are two departments A and B in showroom. So out of 36,000, one third will be allocated to A and two third of 36,000 will be allocated to department B, that is equal to 24,000. Is it clear to you or not? So ultimately, what I will do, this 48,000 worth of salary, 12,000 I will write in department A, 24,000 I will write in department B, and in workshop there is only one department, so 12,000 I will write in department C. That is the point here you need to understand. Then question states another important facet. Workshop rent is 500 per month. The total rental expenses given in the PL account is 10,800. 10,800 is total rental expenses. Total rent expenses is equal to 10,800 that is given to you. Question says that out of this, and we know that organization has got two main parts showroom and workshop. Now, question says that workshop rent is 500 per month. Could you tell me amount of workshop rent? 500 into what? 12 or 6? Sir, 6. Why? Because this is picture of 6 months only. This is trading and profit and loss account for the 6 monthly ended period. So that means workshop rent must be 500 into 6. That is equal to 3000. Are you getting my point or not? So out of 10,800, 3,000 belongs to workshop. That means the remaining portion, 7,800 belongs to showroom. And in the showroom, there are two department A and B. Department A and department B, we know that. And question now says that the rent of the showroom is to be divided equally. So that means, now this rent will be divided equally. That is 3,900, 3,900. So when I will prepare trading and profit or loss account, out of total rental expenses of 10,800, I will divide 3,900, uh, I will divide it as follows, Department A 3,900, Department B 3,900, and of course workshop is 3,000. So this is how you are going to divide your salary and wages rental, and obviously selling expenses will be divided on the basis of sales. 
and sales ratio is given to us. Even though I have completely and comprehensively solved this question, but still I will solve it for you. Correct? So for that I will require a bit of space now. So I will reduce the view of it so as to create more space for me. This is your question number 1.4, correct? 1.4. This is 1.4. 1.4 has slided down. One point four. Departmental trading and profit and loss account. That should be our title. Departmental trading and profit and loss account. Departmental trading and profit and loss account. Correct. We have already seen that there are three department in this particular question. One is department A. Another one is Department B, then there is Department C. So I will put up a line over here. And then I will write here Department A, Department B and Department C. Departmental Trading and Profit and Loss Account. As per the initial information, as per the initial information, we have been given in this question some items in segregated manner, isn't it or not? Some items have already been given to us in segregated manner. For example, there is no opening stock in this particular question, so you need not require to write opening stock. But just to make the point a little bit more clear, there is no opening stock in the question, correct? However, we will Go ahead with purchases. Now, as far as purchases are concerned, it is given to us 1,40,700. Then 90,600 of Department B, which deals in DVD. And some spare parts have been purchased for this particular department, 64,400. And we have been given sales. As far as sales are concerned, 1,50,000 or Department A, 1 lakh for Department B and 25,000 for Department C. Now in this question, salary and wages is written. So I will not write salary and wages here because if it would have been written wages and salary, then I would have written it over here. So nothing else is given. Now closing stock, I will write. Closing stock is 60,100 and then we have got 20,300 and then 44,600. So now we are in a position to find out the gross profit and your gross profit will be equal to 69,400. Gross profit of Department B is 29,700. Of Department C is 5,200. Till up to this particular stage, there is no problem. Correct? If you want to write, you write. Otherwise, this question has been given to you. In fact, more or less, every question has been given to you in a solved manner. 69,400. 29,700 but still I would like you to write when you write you gain what we call little bit more proficiency now in this case we will have to allocate the expenses the first one is salary and wages now salary and wages as I told you earlier as far as salary and wages is concerned, we have already done the computation, but just to make the point a little bit more clear. Regarding salary and wages question had stated, 
salary and wages. Question has very clearly told us that out of total salary of 48,000, out of total salary of 48,000, three-fourth is meant for showroom. Three-fourth is meant for showroom. And one-fourth for your workshop. So I will compute three fourth of forty eight that is equal to thirty six thousand, which we already computed earlier, and workshop is equal to twelve thousand. There is only one department in workshop that means department C's salary allocation will be twelve thousand. However, question has stated further further that salaries of showroom will be divided between these two department in the ratio of one is to two. So I will take one third and two third of thirty six thousand that is equal to twelve thousand and twenty four. This is what we did earlier. So now we have allocated these expenses twelve, twenty four, and twelve. So I will write here twelve thousand. As per the working note, I will write here twelve thousand, twenty four thousand, and twelve thousand. Similarly, regarding rent. Some information is given. Total rent given to us. Is 10,800. From here on I am going to subtract workshop rent. Workshop rent is equal to 500 into 6. It is important, don't multiply it with 12. That is 3000. So that means showroom rent must be equal to 7800. And question has clarified that showroom rent will be divided equally. And we know that there are two departments in the showroom, that is Department A and Department B. So 3,900, 3,900 will be the allocation between A and B. So total 10,800 will be allocated in this manner. So you will write here, rent, 3,900, 3,900 and 3,000. Now we are left up with selling expenses. Now selling expenses will be divided on the basis of sales ratio. Isn't it or not? Now if I compute the sales ratio, selling expenses, total selling expenses, given to us 11,000. There are three department A, B, C and we have got the sales of the respective departments. So first let me write the sales of these departments 1 lakh 50, then 1 lakh and 25,000 for department C. So I will compute the ratio 1, 4, 6. So selling expenses will be divided in this ratio. Selling expenses are 11,000. So 6,000, 4,000, 1,000. This is how selling expenses will get divided. Is it clear to you? So you will write here selling expenses. And the amount of selling expenses is equal to 6,000, 4,000, 1,000. Now you can find out your net profit or loss. In this particular question, there is net profit for Department A without any doubt, 47,500. So performance of Department A is very good. However, performance of Department, these two Department is not quite well. Net loss, 2,200. And 10,850. 
10,800, sorry. You also do check by yourself, correct? So this is how you are going to do this question. If you want to note it down, it is up to you. If you do not want to write, then also no problem. So this is your 1.4. And now there, is, there are some problems like this, which you can easily manage it by yourself. Correct? Only thing is that you have to tell on what basis you are going to divide these expenses. These are theoretical sort of questions. And you can also manage 1.6. So with that, we have come to the end of this section 1. And quite obviously, when in the next session I am going to meet you, I will talk about interdepartmental transfers. And that is under section 2. So till then, it's goodbye.